Hey, hey, monkeys, how you doing? Damien Keys here. Welcome to a brand new series. And if you're a YouTube subscriber, Bye -bye. then this is a new playlist. And this series is called How to Make Money as a Musician. Every week, I'll be discussing new topics and new ways that you can make money as a musician. So you need to subscribe and like. And today, we're discussing an overview of you as a musician and how you can start to make money. Number one, your gear. Is your gear all working professionally? Now, I know this is quite obvious, but you would be so shocked at how many musicians I see who turn up to auditions and their gear is either not working properly and they're making excuses for it, or is just not at a high enough professional level. You have to remember that you are about to enter the world at a professional level of musicianship, which means you have to compete, which means as a bass player, you have to compete with me, not just on an experience level, but from a gear level. You don't need expensive gear, but what you do need is the right gear. It can't just be that music shop gear that you don't see on the professional stage. And if you go on YouTube and you go and search out 50, 60, 70 bands, and you have a look at the gear they're using, there will be a common thread that goes through pretty much every band. So therefore, you have gotta get with the program is your gear all working functionally? How many times do you see a stadium level band using an all-in-one effects processor? You just don't. They're fine for the bedroom, but they don't work on huge stadium levels. And so therefore, the same goes for your guitar, the same goes for your amp, the same goes for your drum kit. You need to have gear which shows off the right impression and is also usable time in and time out and isn't gonna just break every single night you go on stage. So you need professional working gear. Number two, do you drive? I know, it's point number two and I've already gone away from playing, but this is about how you make yourself hireable, the most hireable you can possibly be so that you can get work. And there is nothing worse than having to go and pick up a drummer because he doesn't drive and then drop him back after the rehearsal or drop him back after the gig. It's an absolute nightmare. So if you don't drive, now is the time to learn. There's no excuses because you can learn. And I know it's expensive, but if you need to, you have to go and find a friend who does drive and you need to say, this is really important, this is my career, I need you to help me, teach me to drive. And if you have to save up in order to learn to drive, then you have to do that. A lot of musicians I talk to, they say, if I get the gigs, I'll get a car. Well, let me tell you something, it's the other way around. If you get a car, then you get the gigs. Because we get phone calls every single day in our office for musicians. We have lists and lists of musicians. And the first thing we think of is, how are they gonna get there? And so if you don't drive, you're already pushed down the list. Is that fair? It doesn't make any difference because this is responsibility for getting someone to a gig. This is your responsibility. And I hear excuses all of the time about I don't need to drive because I'm really good at public transport. Well, let me tell you something. If you've got to transport a base and an Ampeg stack and you've got to go there on the train, it's pretty damn difficult. And also, what happens if you go into a festival where there aren't? any trains, there aren't any buses. What are you gonna do then? So stop making excuses and telling me reasons why you don't need to drive. And number two, prioritize this. This would be my absolute number one priority if I couldn't drive. Over everything else, I would invest every single penny into learning to drive and getting myself on the road. Number three, how much are you gigging? If you wanna gig a lot, you need to be experienced at gigging. And the way to get experienced at gigging is to do a lot of gigs. And also, gigs come from gigs. The fastest way you can build up gigging is actually by gigging. Because the more you gig, the more people want you to gig. And it goes round and round in circles. So how much are you gigging right now? You're gigging once a week, not enough. Are you gigging twice a week? Not enough. Are you gigging three times a week? Now we're starting to talk. If you're gigging three times a week, it means this year you're gonna be doing around about 160 gigs, 150 gigs, something like that. Now that is a decent amount of gigs. Within that year, you are gonna improve drastically. You are gonna meet a lot of people for networking. And therefore, your gigging experience and everyone seeing you gig is gonna build and build and therefore you will get gigs from gigs and that's when you can start making some more money. Number four, do you sing or can you sing? Now I know you're listening thinking, oh, I can kind of sing a little bit and do a bit of BVs. If you can do BVs, you can sing. And if you can sing, you need to be getting better as a singer. You wouldn't believe how important and how valuable this is. 
tours are always trying to cut costs. So if you can stick a microphone in front of you and you can do a third above, and do some harmonies, or even back up the lead singer a little bit, it means everything. It's so important. Now on this, I know this because I actually started a band nine years ago and became a singer of a band, even though I wasn't a singer. And at first it was pretty terrible, but it got easier and I got better. And it's something that you can learn, I promise you. But it is so valuable and this is an amazing way to make yourself more hireable. Number five, do you know the repertoire? The more songs you know, the more likely it is that you are going to get a call. So if I were you, I'd start calling up all the covers bands and even the originals bands in your area and saying to them, give me your set list, give me your songs and let me learn them so if there's a disaster, I can step in and save the day. Now if something does go wrong and there is a disaster, who's the first person they're going to think of? It's you. So therefore, you need to actually get these sets and learn them. The more songs you learn, the more hireable you are. The more hireable you are, the easier it is for you to get work. Number six, are you ready? Let me rephrase that. Are you ready now? Like right now. What happens if you're a drummer and a drummer of a band breaks down in his car or breaks his wrist or something goes wrong? To be able to just up and leave with kit, get to a gig and play makes you invaluable. And these things happen more than you'd think. I get phone calls all the time saying, I need a drummer and I need them tonight. And it might be two hours away. And loads and loads of musicians say, oh, tonight, oh, I'm kind of busy. The ones that win are the ones that save the day. The ones that say, I'm in the car, I'm on the way. I've got everything I need. Send me your set list, I'll download it onto Spotify and I'll be listening on the way to the gig so I can save the day. Because when you save the day, there is so many people that will hear about it. Because the band that you helped will tell everyone, the band that you helped will remember, and it's just another example of you doing the right thing. So don't be lazy. If you can save the day, save the day. So therefore, in order to save the day, you've got to be ready. And it means you've got to be ready to go now. Number seven, the first impression. Now, when someone goes to your social media or even your website, if that's how you're promoting yourself, it needs to answer one question straight away. Who are you? If you're a drummer, what do you look like? What do you sound like? Where are you? How contactable are you? Those questions, because when it pops up, I don't want to be scrolling through your Facebook as I'm panicking trying to find a drummer to see what you look like and, and where you live. What I want is I want to just pop up and I want to just say, this looks really, really good. If you want to do that, you need a professional photo shoot and you need to have videos of you playing because this is the way it works. Someone will say to someone like me, I'm looking for a drummer and I'll say, okay, I know a couple guys and I'll send them your stuff. Now, when they hit your social media, they need to have that first impression instantly. They need to be relaxed. They need to see it and say, yes, great. This guy looks fantastic and therefore it needs to have that professional photo shoot and videos very, very high up on the list. First impression in fact. They don't want to be scrolling through your Christmas pictures. They want to just hit your site and say, good, this person looks like they can handle the job. The first impression really, really helps when you are trying to get work. Number eight, social proofing. Let me ask you a question. I need a guitarist and I need you to recommend a guitarist. It can't be yourself. Who is the person out of all of your friends and acquaintances that you are going to recommend to me for that guitarist? Now, flip and reverse that. If someone gets asked that question, they have to think about you. You have to be top of the list. And if you think about it, you know loads of guitarists. However, one person sprung to mind. That's got to be the same, but you've got to be the top of everyone's list. And how you do that is by being busier and working harder and having more videos and being more busy and doing more gigs and having more recordings. The more you do, the more people will push you up. When you're at college and you're sat next to 15 to 20 other guitarists, everyone's on the same level, but very quickly, someone will get pushed up. Why do they get pushed up? Because they push themselves up. Because they say, here is a professional Facebook. Here's a professional YouTube with my videos. Here's me doing three gigs this weekend. And all of a sudden, all of the people in the class go, oh, okay, so he's up here and we're down here. The reality is there's no difference except this person here was busier and made themselves 
better than everyone else. So your job, if you're not gigging, is to be putting out videos. But if you are gigging, that's the chance where you can really social proof this. If you're at a gig and you say, here's me at a gig, everyone's gonna say, wow, he's at another gig. And here's me in the studio. Wow, he's in the studio. And here's me doing some teaching. Wow, now he's doing teaching. Every time you've got a guitar or drumsticks in your hand and people are seeing you with that, they are gonna be thinking to themselves, I'll push you a little higher, I'll push you a little higher, I'll push you a little higher. So you become over everyone else in your town or your city. So when someone has to be recommended to play, it's gonna be you. Number nine, don't ask how much money. Ooh. Now wait, hear me out on this. I'm not saying play for free, but it does bug me when one of the first questions I get is, how much am I gonna get paid? Show me the money! because I just feel like it's a really unprofessional thing to do. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't find out how much you're getting paid, but that phrase really annoys me. How much am I gonna get paid? It makes you feel not like a team player and not like we're in this together. It makes you feel like a, a mercenary bounty hunter out for you. So I don't like that question. And I think the better way to do it is tell me about this gig. Because that way they'll say, this is the gig. And in that, they will tell you how much you're gonna get paid. And also, if you don't have a gig, in my opinion, you should be gigging. So if someone offers you a gig and you say, I wouldn't get out of bed for that much money, and you don't have a gig, so therefore you're gonna go watch X Factor on a Saturday night, I think you're an idiot. So my golden rule has always been, gig first and money will follow. And I gig shit tons, and guess what? I make shit tons of money from doing gigs. It's as simple as that. And it's because I don't focus on the money. I focus on the gigs and the money follows. Number 10, and here's the biggest one. I want you to over deliver on every gig. So this means I want you to be the first one in and the last one out. And then when you're on that gig, you are carrying stuff. You are helping set up. You're asking what you can do. You're helping with some social media. Anything that you can do to over deliver so that the person who's hiring you is thinking, wow, look what we're getting compared to what we have. This person sings and they drive and they just say yes to everything. Now they're doing our social media. All of a sudden they're carrying loads of stuff. There's nothing worse than someone who just comes in late, does the gig and then just leaves. If I'm on a gig, I wanna get there and I wanna make a big deal. I wanna help as much as I can. So when the next call comes up, who are they gonna think about? They're gonna think about me. So I wanna over deliver on everything I possibly can. So this is a general overview of number one of the series of how to make money as a musician. But each week, I will be looking at a different aspect of the industry, whether it's covers bands or teaching or sync music or session playing. Each week, we'll look at a new way that you can make money as a musician. So thanks for watching. I need you to like and subscribe and comment below. I always appreciate that. Anything you need, give me a shout. Otherwise, I'll see you again tomorrow.